it's my first time back home on the stage after giving birth. I'm, I'm creating my own homecoming, and it's hard. There were days that I thought, you know, I'd never be the same. I'd never be the same physically. My strength and endurance would never be the same. Beyonce's Netflix documentary Homecoming dropped at midnight on a Wednesday. Did you watch it? Because we didn't stay up, but we definitely got up early to watch it. We woke up and we're a little tired. Yeah, yeah this is a gorgeous, more than two hour long film. And it's also an intimate, in-depth look at the emotional road that led to Beyonce's 2018 Coachella Ooh. performance, which was epic. So we're gonna break down the biggest takeaways, starting with her pregnancy. I mean, when she was giving birth to twins, Sir and Rumi, it wasn't exactly flawless. Nope, pun intended. But she gave birth to the twins on June 13th, 2017. And she really opened up in this documentary about all the things she was going through that we had no idea. Check it out. I was supposed to do Coachella the year prior, but I got pregnant unexpectedly. My body went through more than I knew it could. I had an extremely difficult pregnancy. I had high blood pressure. I developed toxemia preeclampsia. And in the womb, one of my baby's heartbeat paused a few times. That's scary stuff. She also revealed she was 218 pounds when she gave birth to the twins, thus beginning her insane diet workout come back in preparation for Beychella. Mm -hmm. Here's what she was doing 65 days before her performance. It's intense, guys. In order for me to meet my goal, I'm limiting myself to no bread, no carbs, no sugar, no dairy, no meat, no fish, no alcohol. And I'm hungry. I don't what was she eating then? Like, I don't know, spinach? <laughs> like, that's it. She was that's it. Yeah. Uh, she also opened up about why Coachella was so important to her because this is really a history-making performance that happened in April 2018. It was important to me that everyone that had never seen themselves represented felt like they were on that stage with us. As a black woman, I used to feel like the world wanted me to stay in my little box. And black women often feel underestimated. It was more important that I brought our culture to Coachella. We also really got to see a side of Jay-Z in this documentary mm -hmm. that we hadn't seen before and their little like love connection. It's so sweet. Yeah, because I feel like last time we saw them with the lemonade, they were like we kind of saw them breaking up and coming back together kind of thing. And this is just like their intimate, adorable life. And at one point she FaceTimes him. Is them <laughs> All right, just had to share. <laughs> we also see a uh, seven-year-old Blue Ivy. I think she was six at the time of the documentary, but she's taken after her parents. She was caught performing a verse from Lift Every Voice and Sing, and um, girls got pipes, I gotta say. Who knew? <laughs> Beautiful job, of her. You sound so pretty. Oh, you want to do it again? You're like mommy, huh? I'm going to do that again. It feels good. It feels good? I have a feeling that homecoming is all anyone's going to be talking about today, especially because Beyonce did what Beyonce does best, and she dropped a previously unannounced live album version of the concert. I mean, when does this woman sleep, honestly? When does she sleep? That was my biggest takeaway from the documentary mm -hmm. is when does she sleep? She's the hardest working woman in the entire world. Truth. Of course, we'll be here to keep you up to date on all things Mrs. Carter, so be sure to keep it locked on ET. Until next time, I'm Hallie Stevens. I'm Ash Carlson. Bye for now.